Tonight, I'll be testing out the brand new Askar SQA-106. It's a high-end astrophotography refractor that claims to have amazing optical performance across the board. I can't believe it, but I actually have a full moonless night to test the scope. This means that I can provide some accurate examples of the types of images you could expect to take with this one. I've got a full night of astrophotography ahead of me, so I hope you come along for the ride. I'm going after an interesting area of nebulosity tonight in the constellation Auriga. This part of the sky is visible until about 1 a.m. from my backyard, so I should be able to get about four hours on my target. If you're familiar with the constellation Auriga, you'll know that there's two amazing deep sky objects that lie in there the Flaming Star Nebula and the Tadpoles Nebula. While these are the obvious choices, I've captured them so many times, I want to go after something new. Just north of the Tadpoles, you'll find the Spider Nebula and the Fly Nebula. I'll be able to fit both of these targets within the same field of view, and there's plenty of colorful stars in that area as well. The real star of the show tonight is the new Askar SQA-106. It's a quintuplet Petzl astrograph with a focal length of 509 millimeters at f4.5. Yep, 509. It's a five element lens design that doesn't require an additional field flattener and it isn't picky about a specific back focus distance either. The description states that it supports full frame sensors with a massive 55 millimeter image circle. They even provide this MTF chart that provides the relative illumination across the image field. 90% for a 44 millimeter image sensor and 75% for a 55 millimeter. This is a beautiful telescope in person. I'm a fan of the anodized gray metal, and I just noticed the little bird on the Ascar logo. The focuser, dovetail plate, the accessory mounts, the dew shield, this thing's ready to go. If you want to mount a guide scope or an ASI Air or a mini PC, all of the brackets are there ready for you out of the gate. It's a pretty heavy telescope, about 13 pounds. So if you're using it on the AM5 like I am, you might want to use the counterweight. It's about the same weight as the Skywatcher Esprit 100 for reference. To fully utilize the optical performance of the SQA-106, you're gonna wanna use a full frame camera and take broadband images. This is the ultimate test of a telescope's optics because it will reveal things like vignetting, any issues with color correction, and overall field illumination. Tonight, I'll take some filterless images with my one-shot color astronomy camera, but just remember that I'm in a Bortle 6, so it would only get better under dark skies. For this target, I think my best use of time is to spend half the night taking images in broadband RGB and the other half using a dual narrowband filter to give the image some pop. If you've ever tried to shoot a dim broadband target from the city, you'll know that the final image can be a bit of a disappointment in the overall impact department. I'm using the ASI 2600MC Air on the 106 tonight. While it's a crop sensor camera, it's one of the best color image sensors on the market and a great match for this telescope in terms of image scale. The duo sensor design allows me to skip the guide scope and guide camera comp Combo, and the built-in ASI Air means that I can run this entire rig from inside the house with my tablet. I'll start shooting images without a filter as soon as it gets dark out, and then after about two hours, I'll switch to the Optolong L Ultimate filter as the telescope starts pointing towards the light dome. The goal is two hours in broadband, two hours in dual narrowband. I highly recommend installing an autofocuser on this bad boy. At f4.8, it's pretty picky about that focus point. I've just got too many telescopes on the go for testing or else I would have installed an EAF on there. This means that I'll be in and out of the house all night refocusing if I notice those star sizes getting out of hand. If you didn't already know, the ASI Air has a handy detect stars feature where you can measure the size of all the stars on a frame by frame basis. I just look at the average star size for my first frame and compare it to my last one. If it's substantially worse, I'll come out and give the focus or a slight turn. While we are officially in galaxy season now, this isn't exactly a galaxy scope. At 509 millimeters, this telescope was born for big nebulae regions. 
I can't wait to bring it to a dark sky spot this summer. The timing of this first light made choosing a target a bit tough. There's a bit of a gap in nebulae from March to May. So while I can capture about four hours in Auriga tonight, I'll try to stay up late and capture Cygnus as it comes up after 3.30 a.m. I should be able to capture some time on the Seder region, which is a very busy nebulous region. have a look at the data I captured with the SQA-106. So what we're looking at here first is a two-minute sub-exposure, uh, no filter, um, using the ASI 2600 MC Air. So you, you know, you can see the, the star shape, there's no concerns there. Uh, a little bit easier to see when we do a stack of 50 frames with an auto stretch applied. So again, this is a no filter with a crop sensor color camera through the SQA-106. So what you can see at this view here is there's some slight vignetting, um, which is, I guess, to be expected, even though this is a crop sensor camera. So you would see a lot more vignetting with a full frame sensor, that's for sure. Um, most of this could be easily taken care of by using flat frames, which I just didn't get around to doing. So uh, that can be corrected, nothing to worry about there. And this is an exaggerated view as I've applied this very aggressive auto stretch, but there's nowhere to hide in data like this. No filter, broadband, just straight through the scope. So there's no filters to, to help correct those stars or anything like that. So this is out of the box, what you can expect with the SQA-106. Everything looks great. I love the, the star quality and the star colors. There's no weird star patterns um, that, that I can see anyway. Uh, what I did notice here is the Fly Nebula is a really cool target. I thought it was kind of an unassuming uh, deep sky object I've never went for before, but I didn't realize there's reflection nebulosity in there. It's a reflection slash emission nebula. So I'd love to go after this one up close at some point. It's just a beautiful little nebula. You can see the spider nebula in the middle. There's a lot more hydrogen in that region. A little harder to tell in broadband RGB, but uh, I just love the, the star color and variation in here. And if we really want to look at the uh, star quality across the frame, we can go to script, uh, image analysis, aberration inspector, and it will do this little report here and we'll see the edges of the frame compared to the center. Now, I will say that I had a slight issue in my polar alignment that night. I rushed the process and uh, that's on me. There's, you know, I can't blame the scope for that. So those stars are just a little bit misshapen uh, because of that. But otherwise, everything looks great in terms of star quality, which it should be for a scope of this quality. Um, with the, you know, the claims this, the star point performance as good as it is. So no surprises in the image data there. I'm very happy with the star quality so far in this SQA-106. So if we want to see some more exciting shots, we can look at the images that I took with a dual narrow band filter, the Optolong L Ultimate. You can see a lot more nebulous regions in there, a lot of hydrogen gas, especially around the, uh, the spider nebula. So this is uh, probably about 40, 30 to 40 frames, five minute frames using the L ultimate filter. And now we can see a little bit more punch to the, the nebulous regions in the area. So I combine the two for kind of a hybrid image. And this is kind of close to what you'll see in my final image where I, I combine that dual narrow band data, really punchy details with my broadband color details to get natural star colors and a more balanced look at the area. So that's that. And I also just wanted to show you how cool this area looks in Starless when you remove the stars. There's some really cool 
um, you know, regions of gas around the spider nebula that I thought were really cool. So I'm happy with the way I framed this up. I'm, I shared an early version of my final image on Facebook. People seem to enjoy it. So uh, I hope you appreciate the, the kind of inside look at the raw data captured with the SQA-106. You can kind of see what Ascar is going after with the SQA line. It's their high-end premium Petzval refractor line. So the high sticker price, the sticker shock for this scope, over three grand. If you compare that to other refractors for astrophotography, you can get a much larger scope. You can get Ascar's own PHQ 130. Uh, the ZWO refractor, the 130, is around that price. The William Optics FLT 120. So larger scopes for the same price tag. So you're paying a premium for these kind of uh, additional features. It's a really well thought out telescope and they go to great lengths to prove the optical quality with all the, the test reports and everything. So if that's important to you, they've done a really great job with this telescope. If it is too much, but you still want this kind of optical quality and you like the Ascar line, go for the smaller ones. There's a 70 millimeter version or the 55, that's under a grand, 795 US, I think. So you can scale back and get a smaller version of this SQA line if you're interested in this telescope, but you know, can't afford to spend over three grand on an astrophotography refractor. Overall, uh, I'm super impressed. I kind of had a feeling that I would really like this one after my experience with the 55. Uh, a lot of thought went into this one and I think they've done a great job. So as long as this is here on loan. I'm going to keep on using it. Uh, as you can imagine, with all the refractors I have, it's tough to limit myself to one, but this is one that's going to get kind of priority over some of the others. And uh, I'll continue sharing more information about it as I use it.